Mario 64 Machinima. For years, this community has continued to find new and interesting ways to manipulate a game engine made in 96 to help tell the stories we wish to tell. From hiding HUD elements, to texture modifications, to even creating our own custom maps, we've come a long way from where it all started. The one thing that's always stood out to me is camera control. The camera has always been very limited in what we could do with it. With Mario 64 Movie Maker, we could freeze it in place. And with time, we went a little further. We wanted to make the camera fly, so we started with the wing cap and later moved to the hover code. We even figured out how to slow the camera down for nicer, smoother pans. But even with all that, we've still been very limited by the engine. I think that's about to change. In the description I've provided a link to a file that contains everything you'll need to get started. When you open the zip folder, you'll find a folder called Resources and two WAD files. For those unfamiliar with WAD files, those are the games. Those files can go anywhere, but I personally like to put all of my game files in the folder containing the application, but that's just personal preference. For those who are new to this emulator, here's a quick tip. To make the game show up in a list like this, click the Browse button and select the folder containing your games. This is useful for doing things like enabling cheats. Plus it puts everything in one spot, so I mean, I don't know, I wouldn't shoot. When you open up Resources, you'll find a folder named Dolphin Emulator. You'll want to click and drag that folder into the folder containing your Dolphin Emulator save data. By default, it's saved to your Documents folder, but if it isn't there, you can find it by opening up Dolphin, right-clicking on one of the games, and selecting Open Wii Save Folder. Then just back up to the folder containing the Dolphin Emulator folder. Now it's time to open up Dolphin. Click on the Graphics icon and go to Enhancements. With this being a Nintendo 64 game, I would recommend these settings as a starting point, and you can tinker from there. Now go to Advanced and make sure that Free Look and Load Custom Textures are both checked. This will allow us to move the camera freely and get rid of the HUD. The controls for the Free Look camera are as follows. Press and hold Shift in the WASD keys to move the camera. Hold right click and move the mouse to rotate the camera. Press Shift and 1 to decrease the camera's speed. Press Shift and 2 to increase the camera's speed. Press Shift and F to reset the camera speed, and press Shift and R to reset the position of the camera. With all of that out of the way, we can now go into Mario 64. With a powerful tool like this, so many things can go wrong. I mean, you're essentially breaking the game to make this happen. The first thing you need to understand is that when you move the camera around, you're not actually affecting the game's viewport. The game camera position and rotation is still in the same spot as it was when you left it, but you're just viewing it from a different angle. That being said, there's a ton of stuff that's playing towards the camera, and if you are looking from a different angle, it doesn't look right. Especially decals, which there's a lot of them in this game. A few examples are the shadows, the trees, the windows on the castle, the bob King bob Wiggler, and a whole bunch of others. And then there's the biggest decal for everything in this game, the skybox. 
The whole skybox is just a decal that follows the rotation of the camera to illustrate fake depth in a fake 3D skybox. It's just a 2D image moving around based on where the camera moves. And it's very prominent when you move into the free camera and you see the skybox tilting incorrectly because it's still tilting towards the camera's perspective rather than your perspective. In most cases, I've found the best way to alleviate this whole problem of things disappearing and the skybox screwing up is through moving the character around rather than moving with the free cam. You don't get as many problems with decals and as long as your angle looks right, the sky shouldn't be much of a problem either. A method I came to like was having Mario zoom in so he could look around and then putting the camera way out there and, and then you can get like these nice sweeping shots. So far I've only found one case where I could actually move the free cam on its own and that was that toad shot. Other than that, every other situation has caused decal problems or what have you. So I'd just say avoid it unless you can find a way to make it work. But even then I'd still say avoid it. Now I'm sure a good handful of you at this point have been trying to figure out why I also provided Mario 64 multiplayer in the couple of games. And the answer is quite simple. You can use one of the other characters as a camera point. Which adds a whole new level of different things that you can do with the camera. Like this shot, for instance. I had Mario standing on the water underneath the bridge, and I just had Luigi run forward, and I had the camera tilt up a little bit, and it gave that a nice shot, so there's a lot of potential with this. Now, I'm not gonna act like I'm some kind of messiah of machinima because I found this information. Literally anybody else could have found this information, and in fact, some people have. I just happened to be the one to make a video about it. However, even with the good comes the bad. Unfortunately, there's a few compatibility issues between Project 64 and Dolphin Emulator. There's no Game Shark, so none of the cheats that we've been using for years can be transferred over to Dolphin very easily. And there's a huge lighting difference between running Project 64 and Dolphin you can see Dolphin is a lot darker. However, that I have a fix for. I've created a lighting preset that replicates what it would look like in Project 64, but at the time of this recording, there's still no solution for Game Shark. At first, I wanted to find a solution to this on my own, so that when this did come out to the public, people could just jump right in and it would be as easy as that. But then I realized, this community has been centered around sharing ideas from person to person since the beginning. Why stop now? The best way to test the waters with something like this is to give it to the people. See what they come up with. So, that's the plan. Let's find out together how effective this concept will be. Throughout this community's lifetime, there have been so many interesting stories and so many different artistic styles brought to the table. We've come very far, and honestly, I don't think we're done yet. Whether this turns out to be the first big step in a new direction, or this goes completely nowhere, either way, the future keeps looking brighter.